Hey everyone, welcome to our Monday live stream. It is a windy day here in Southern California. <clears throat> Excuse me, and I am live streaming indoors because I would literally get completely blown away right now in the wind. Um, if you live anywhere in Southern California, most likely you're dealing with a lot of wind as well. And it is just roaring out there. I had to go outside a couple times this morning already and uh, <clears throat> excuse me, and uh, recover my patio furniture. All the covers were blowing around everywhere. So hopefully you guys are staying warm wherever you're at. I know a lot of you are um, in the chat here from Northern Climates, Idaho, Cliff from Idaho. I know my backyard um, in Canada, um, several other Canadian viewers, and people here from all over the US are under a lot of snow. Back in the East and the Midwest, there's tons of snowstorms. So nothing like a little bit of snow to get you in the holiday mood, right? So hopefully you guys are staying warm, are getting ready for Christmas, and I wanna tell you all, happy holidays. It's only a week or so until Christmas. In fact, this is gonna be our last Monday live stream until 2020. Can you guys believe it is almost a brand new decade? Absolutely crazy. I, can't, I cannot believe how fast this past 10 years has gone. So we're gonna be off next week, which is, I believe it's the 22nd. No Monday live stream. And then we're also gonna be off on Monday, I think it's the 30th. So we'll resume our regular Monday live streams again on the 6th of January, 2020. However, we are gonna be having a special live stream um, on the day of our book signing launch party. We're doing a live in-person book signing launch party in Thousand Oaks, California, and we are gonna be live streaming a portion of that, probably the first half hour or 45 minutes. It's gonna be a ton of fun. Um, if you pre-ordered your book, um, bring it along. If you don't have a book, there'll be books there for you to purchase. It's gonna be in Thousand Oaks, California, and Camera Guy and I can't wait to meet you. So if you live anywhere in the Southern California or Central California area, make the effort to get down to see us. It's gonna be at a location called Painting with a Twist. And what that is, it's a paint and sip art studio. So not only are we gonna be signing copies of my brand new book, which releases um, one week from tomorrow. Oh my gosh, one week from tomorrow. Um, but we are gonna be enjoying a fun, relaxing afternoon together. We're gonna to be painting some garden art um, on a wood plank that looks something like this. Um, we're gonna be painting an herb project. I mean, who doesn't love herbs? It's gonna be so much fun. There's a um, art bar, which is for age 21 and plus. There's also a paint shop for age 13 plus, and there'll be all the links in the video description on how you can sign up and reserve your spot. Reservations close on uh, the 20th, which I believe is Friday. Spots are filling up, so make sure you go to the video description here on this live stream and get all the links. All the information is down below there, and we would love to have you be a part of our very first book signing event. We're just so excited about it. It's gonna be a lot of fun just to relax after the holiday rush and enjoy some time together. I mean, what a ball. Okay, and camera guy is here in the chat. That's awesome. Everything moderators and more. Everything moderators. Everything sunflowers and more is our moderator. Her name is Christy. She's in the chat. If this is your first time, welcome. Today we are talking about some questions. Um, you guys put a ton of questions in the, um, the comments on YouTube. YouTube, on Instagram, email a ton of questions in, which we absolutely love. Today I'm gonna to be answering four of them um, about peas, about indoor gardening, about growing tomatoes in the winter. There's three or four questions. And I also wanted to read a couple of comments that really inspired me this week. Um, and we're calling these, we haven't done this for a while, the viewer of the week. So we've got a couple of them today. Um, this first one is from Amanda Ruiz. And she wrote um, on a YouTube uh, video, she wrote, I've toyed with the idea of starting a vegetable garden for years, but I've never had the confidence to get it started. During my dreaming, I found your channel, the video on composting in a five gallon smart pot to be exact. And the way you explain gardening makes it seem so easy. I'm finally starting my garden and I'd love to have your book on hand as a reference. Thank you for inspiring me. So I just wanted to give Amanda a shout out here. Just tell her congratulations for starting your garden. I love how she just got started, dove right in, found some gardening videos and, this, and then just jumped right in. I mean, my philosophy is start simple and expand later. And Amanda is finally starting her garden and enjoying growing her own vegetables. And I just wanna say kudos 
kudos to Amanda if, you're, if you happen to be watching or if you're watching later on the replay. I am so happy that you found us here on YouTube. You're part of our community and you started your own garden. So keep on growing. Springtime is coming. If you can't grow right now in, in outside, you can grow something inside and spring will be here um, very soon. So the second comment I wanted to read is from one of our very own who joins us week after week, is always encouraging, always helpful, is a good friend to so many people here in the chat, all over YouTube, um, commenting, encouraging people, and also on Instagram. And that is our very own Cliff Warren. So Cliff, I know you're here today. You join us every week and we absolutely love all your gardening expertise that you share. But he shared a comment um, over on our YouTube video. Hi, Cl hey, Cliff. On uh, Saturday, um, we posted a video on how to grow peas. And he mentioned a great comment that I absolutely loved. He said, yes, here in snowy Idaho, peas are the very first thing we plant in the spring. In fact, we say plant them as soon as you can work the soil. So that may be mid-March for me, and although we may still freeze in May or last year in June, the peas are never something that needs to be worried about. So I love Cliff's comment because it encourages all of us to get out there and get some seeds in the soil. So as soon as you can work that soil, as soon as you have um, the frost, um, you know, maybe lightens up for a couple of days, you can get those peas in. Cliff encouraged all of us to just get out there and put the seeds in the soil, even if it's cold out, um, even if you're still gonna get frost, get those peas planted. They're a great, easy, pretty much a plant it and forget it kind of, kind of crop, right Cliff? So yeah, absolutely, you can do it. And I love how Cliff is always encouraging people to experiment and try new things. In fact, I know he's growing, he's doing a, a giant tomato contest not outside, but inside in the wintertime. So go figure, guys. You want to check him out over on Instagram. Uh, Cliff, are you Cliff Warren on Instagram? I'm sorry, I can't remember. But you post a lot of great photos over there. He's got a great big garden and grows all kinds of amazing giant vegetables. Okay, and I see a question here from um, Mr. and Mrs. Lovely, the same way with green beans. No, green beans are actually a warm weather vegetable. So um, you don't want to plant those until your soil temperature is warm, until your outdoor temperatures are in the 60s and 70s. They like 70s and even into the 80s, so they're not going to survive the cold weather like peas do. And something that is in my new book that's going to help you guys too is I give a, have a whole section on cold weather vegetables versus warm weather vegetables. So what, one way you can really make it easy on yourself and start simple is to plant the right vegetables in the right season. So you can see here, um, this section here from my book, we talk about cool weather vegetables and then I, I give some little um, helpful suggestions and secrets to success and what vegetables are cool weather vegetables. So that way you can get started and get off to the, a really good start with those. And then I have a whole other section on warm weather vegetables. So if you're wondering about that, you definitely wanna pick up a copy of my book so you have all of this um, right in front of you as you're sitting around your fire over the cold during Christmas time and you can plan and dream about your spring garden. Uh, spring, someone else mentioned, I think my backyard, the longest day of the year is coming up here on Friday. And after that, the days start getting a little bit lighter. So I know we're counting it down here in California and I can imagine all of you there in the north are really, really counting it down. Now, one thing I did wanna mention, um, just went live on our website over the weekend it is signed personalized copies of our book. We have, um, they won't ship out until the 24th, but you can go over to calikimgardenhome.com. And I do have a very limited amount of the very first um, numbered copies, one through 50, that will be signed, uh, written with a personal note right inside on the cover. And they're the very first edition um, copies that we received. In fact, my publisher is telling me that these are selling so fast, they may do a second printing before springtime. So together, guys, we can make this book a bestseller and you're gonna love how it helps you in your garden. So head over to CallieKimGardenHome.com, grab yourself one of those first 50 numbered editions, and then there's signed personalized copies on there as well. We've got lots of those available. They will be shipped out next week. Just in time for a little after Christmas present or maybe a New Year's present. Okay, so let's get into um, our first question of the week. All right, guys. Um, this is from Santa Ana Road Wildman, who is sometimes able to join us here on our live streams too. His question on peas was 
Would soaking peas for an hour or so help with germination? Um, sometimes when vegetables have, or vegetable seeds has, have a hard outer shell, I'm gonna show you some pea seeds here. Um, soaking them can help speed up germination. So um, seeds like peas or maybe cilantro or things like that. Here's some pea seeds. These are, I think there's the, the sugar and snap peas from the Spring Garden Collection. Um, I, I've never done that before because peas grow so fast that I haven't found it necessary to speed up germination, but you definitely can do that. You could soak them for, I would definitely soak them for more than an hour though. You want to soak them long enough for um, that hard outer shell to soften up because that's what's gonna help really speed the germination along. So if anyone has ever soaked peas before, let me know, I've never found that necessary. But definitely for seeds like, um, like cilantro that has a really hard outer shell, um, I'm trying to think of what other seeds you could possibly soak. Um, cilantro is the one that just comes to mind automatically. But for the most part, um, peas are so easy that you can just pop them right in the ground. You can also start them from seeds indoors if you like to. I've done that um, lots of times as well. Um, but if the weather is right, in other words, if it's um, peas like the cool weather. So if it's 75 degrees or under where you live right now, um, you can go ahead and plant them right in your garden beds. It's so, so easy. And the cool thing is I talked about on the video on Saturday is they'll even take a light frost. So here in California, where we get occasional light frost during the, um, during the winter time, peas are a perfect um, uh, vegetable to grow in the winter in the southern climates, as we discussed in the video. And if you want more details about peas, you can go over and watch that video. Um, we posted it on Saturday. It's called uh, How to Grow Peas in Three Easy Steps and then Three Easy Trellis Ideas. So it'll give you some easy ways that you can trellis your peas um, without spending a lot of money. Um, super easy DIY trellis ideas that you can just pop out there in your garden and there you are with peas. Now, if you're under um, a lot of cold weather right now, you're not gonna want to, um, to plant them outside. You're gonna wanna wait, like Cliff said, until you can kind of work the ground a little bit, it thaws out a little bit, um, and then you can go out and pop your, um, pop your uh, seeds in the ground. So um, super, super easy vegetable to grow and an absolutely delicious garden snack. If you guys haven't grown your own, you've got to. They're so yummy. And I've got a whole section in my book about how to grow peas. So um, this is, has some beautiful photos in here of some peas, how to plant peas in three simple steps. A little quick tip for peas right here. And um, this is something you could even take right out in your garden with you as you're planting as a little reference guide. So it's a little a fun section here in my book. So Santa Ana Road Wild Man, if you're here, thank you so much for your question. And I hope that you were able to grow a lot of peas because I know you're in Central California, so right now is a great time for you to grow peas as well. So let me see what questions are flying by. The chat is absolutely flying by today. It's so much fun to have all of you here. And what a great um, community we have here um, on our live streams. It's such an absolute ball to see all of you giving suggestions to each other. Okay, um, let's see here. Questions flying by, let's see. I'm looking here back in the comments. Cliff says we don't usually soak them, just makes it harder to plant, okay. Nicole is asking about planting the peas in a container. I know a lot of you are, have been answering her question. Absolutely, Nicole, go back and watch my video from the weekend because we did plant some in a little five gallon um, smart pots, just the size of that one right there. It's really the perfect size for peas. And you can pop a little trellis in there. I popped a little um, trellis out of some tree branches, just kind of made it in like a teepee shape. So peas are perfect to plant. You can stick them right outside your back door in a container and they don't need a super deep um, root structure. So um, they really do great in a container. So make sure you give that a try. I do like to plant um, the smaller variety of peas in containers. Um, there's a variety in my small space collection, my small space collection called Little Marvel. It's more compact. It's especially designed for um, growing in a container and those work um, very well in a container. You definitely could do the sugar and snap peas as well, but you would just wanna put a little bit taller of a, um, of a trellis in there to make sure that uh, you have enough room for them to climb and support and just really be um, a healthy plant for you. Okay, let's see. You're welcome, Nicole. Very happy to answer your question. 
Natalie, order my Calicum Smart Pot. I hope I get it for Christmas. Okay, Natalie, I'll have to check and see when your order went out, but I know that um, there were still orders coming in over the weekend. If they're shipped today, depending on where you live, um, if you're here in the US, you should get them um, within two to three days. If you're overseas, it might be a little touchy getting them for Christmas, but um, get your orders in today because there's still plenty of great Christmas gifts over at CaliKimGardenAndHome.com. We've got the CaliKim Smart Pots, all kinds of seed collections to get you started for the spring. Okay, guys, and I wanna thank you for all of your support with my seed shop over the holidays and over the whole entire year and pre-ordering the book. I mean, that's what is making the publisher say we might have to go into a second printing already before the spring even hits. So thank you guys so much. I can't wait for you to get it in your hands and read it and hear all about how it helps you grow more of your own veggies. Okay, guys, we do. We have an absolutely amazing garden community. And Joanne, thank you so much. She's saying the seed collections are beautifully packaged. Thank you. I really appreciate it. I've been very impressed. Thank you, Joanne. Thank you so much. Um, let's see here if there's any other comments. You can still plant pea seeds. Okay, Rainby, yeah, I saw your um, question over on YouTube um, the other day, and I think you were asking, can you plant normal peas? So I'm thinking you mean like the little peas that you would buy at the grocery store, like the snap peas that you would, you know, pick up a package, bring them home and eat them. Um, you know what, you, when, you, when you're planting pea seeds, you wanna make sure, if you want a plant that's true to the um, original uh, type of plant the seed came from, you wanna make sure your um, seeds are heirloom. Um, pea seeds are so inexpensive. Um, you can grab my uh, spring garden seed collection on my website. They're inexpensive if you pick them up over at Home Depot. Um, I've, I haven't tried just planting the fresh peas in the ground. I've always gone with these, but they're super inexpensive. You can pick them up for a couple of bucks or my spring garden collection over on my website and you will be good to go and you won't have any problems with them germinating. So Brandon, hello here. Great, better late than never, Brandon. Thank you so much for the $1.99 super chat. I think you are by far the most faithful super chatter here. I think Brandon super chats almost every week, once or twice during the live stream. So Brandon, we so appreciate your support. And I know you live here in California um, as well. You're not too far away. So hopefully you can make it to our live event on the 28th. We would love to meet you and shake your hand and tell you um, thank you in person. And Sean, Sean's on today, Sean Crystal Brown. Um, we need a book signing in Canada. And Sean, I don't know if we're gonna make it to Canada, but I hope we can. We will do what we can to, um, to make it around to different locations around the US. We would love to get international as well. So thank you so much for all of your support. I appreciate that, Sean. Okay, next question here. And this was a great question because it gave me a new video idea, actually, and I always appreciate ideas for new content. Um, this is a question from Donna on the P video on um, Saturday. And Donna said, or actually maybe it was Sunday, uh, Donna said, can peas be grown in a hanging basket? Have you ever tried it? Or if you haven't, is growing peas in a hanging basket something that you would try? And Donna, I absolutely love that because what do I always say? Experiment, experiment, experiment. And Donna, this gives me a great idea of something to experiment with and I would love for you all to do it too. And I have to read uh, Bass 120 watching from London. And that is just so exciting. I love having international viewers on here. It's so much fun to hear what people are doing all over the world. So thank you for um, tuning in with us all the way from London. Um, so Donna, I would love for you to try it or anyone else, else out there to try growing peas in a hanging basket. There's also, there's actually a really new, exciting um, smart pot coming out, I believe in the spring, that I'm very excited to try. It's actually a basket liner. You know those, those Coco Core basket liners? Well, this is a smart pots basket liner. And we got to see it when we went to the Mandarin Festival. It's absolutely beautiful. And I would love to try growing peas um, in a hanging basket. So maybe um, come springtime or you know, whenever I'm able to get those basket liners, we can give that a try and do it together. I think that would be a lot of fun. So if anyone has ever grown peas in a hanging basket before, please let me know. And way to go, Donna, for experimenting and giving me a brand new content idea. We'll, we'll look for a video series on that coming up, hopefully in the next few months. Okay, 
Here is a question. Oh, let me uh, have some, answer some more questions in the chat here, guys. Catherine, great. Try the basket idea. We can all try it together. That'll be so much fun. Okay, um, let's see. Any other questions or comments going through? I hope you come to San Francisco, please. Nisha, thank you so much. We got to meet Nisha a couple weeks back, the Mandarin Festival, and I have a feeling we may be getting up that way. So we will definitely be announcing book signings um, as we, um, they're definitely in the works. We'll be announcing them as we um, go, as, as they get, you know, uh, set in stone there. Okay, let's see here. Questions, comments in the chat. Look, just kind of scrolling back here. Thank you, Mr. Crazy Cool. Bought your book for my bro. That's awesome. Hopefully it'll help um, your bro grow some more veggies. That's great. Okay, guys. Oh, Brandon, another super chat for $1.99. Just planted peas a couple of weeks ago. Wonderful, Brandon. Here in California, it's a great time to plant them. And they might grow, um, depending on where you have them situated in my backyard, don't get tons of sun in the wintertime, so they'll probably grow a lot slower. Um, but if you have a lot of sun in your backyard and the temperatures are right, they should grow and harvest in about six to eight weeks. And Patty is here. She is watching from Pennsylvania. She is a second grade teacher who has started a garden with her kids, her second grade students, and is growing a lot of the, um, in the smart pots, in some raised beds, growing a lot of the Cali Kim seed collections. And Patty says, my class says hello and we'll try growing peas in a hanging basket. That's awesome, Patty. I can't wait to see your pictures. And um, please make sure you mail me some pictures and share about it here on the live stream. And hello, class, if you're watching right now, keep on gardening, keep on growing, whatever you have to do to grow your own vegetables. I wanna encourage you as kids, now is a great time to start. Okay, and Vaughn is watching from Maine. I can't wait to play in the garden in Maine. Vaughn, I bet and those are, all, those are the rest of you who are um, in the snow and the, and the freezing cold right now. I bet you're just dying to get your hands in the soil. Can't wait to just scratch that gardening itch. Um, I'm sure the winters seem long and dark and sometimes cold. So um, I just wanna encourage you to hang in there if it's at all possible for you to grow a few things indoors like we have going right here. This little container of lettuce this is actually the one we started. Uh, I started when we um, did the video on how to grow lettuce indoors. And look how beautiful it looks. It's a red romaine that the leaves are growing and starting to get the red tinge tips there. So grow something inside if you can, um, just to give you that lift, because if you guys are like me, you always wanna have something green around you. It's easy to grow indoors on your windowsill. These are microgreens. They've been growing on my kitchen window without a grow light. They're in a little, small, little smart pots. So whatever you can do, grow something. These you can just snip off and throw in your salads and your soups. Um, grab the microgreen seed collection and they're so much fun. In fact, um, Patty, this might be a good idea for your class to grow over the winter time too because you can put them in the windowsill. You don't need a grow light and it's super easy for students to do something like this too. Broadway Gardener from snowy New Jersey. Hello, great to have you here. There's just so many um, wonderful gardeners here today. Moonshadow, um, welcome. So let me move on to our third question here. And this is about growing indoors. And since we're talking about growing indoors with some of the plants behind me, let me go ahead and throw this question out there. And this was from Mary Greer. Can you use a dome cover for growing indoors? Uh, Mary, I personally don't prefer to use dome covers. I know a lot of people do and I should have brought one out here with me, but what Mary's talking about, if you're not familiar, um, if you're starting some seeds indoors, and these are some of the All America Selection varieties that I'm growing. These were started on the first, which was, what's the date today, the 16th. So these were started two weeks ago. They've been under grow lights upstairs. And sometimes these little trays come with like a plastic lid that you can put over them, or some people put saran wrap. Um, I personally don't like to do that because I feel like it, condenses the moisture too much, it makes mold on the soil, or maybe the fungus gnats, gnats are attracted to the moisture. So it's not the way that I prefer to grow, but some people like it. So you might just wanna try it. Um, it does have the advantage though of keeping the heat in. So um, depending on how warm or cold your house is, um, you know, in California, we don't get super, super cold, so it, my plants tend to do okay without it. So um, give it a try if you end up getting a lot of mold on your plants and you wanna take that cover off. 
But for sure, as soon as your seeds germinate, they're gonna need the light, they're gonna need the air. So um, you might wanna do it until they germinate and then pull that lid off so they're getting plenty of light and plenty of air. Otherwise, you definitely will get um, leggy seedlings. You'll have some, maybe some mold problems or fung fungus snap problems. So definitely um, you want to check on your plants daily to make sure they're not having any of those kinds of issues. So um, yeah, so get some plants going inside. I did want to talk about, I'll talk about that actually with my next question, this little grow light setup, because I know that um, I believe it was Nicole on here earlier was talking about um, growing tomatoes inside and has some questions about that. So we'll get to that in just a second. All right, I see some questions flying by here. Brandon is asking, do peas need a lot of water? Um, Brandon, they don't really necessarily need a lot of water, but you definitely do wanna keep the soil moist. Um, so like I always talk about, you always wanna check your plants daily and use your little um, finger as a moisture meter. Put your finger down in your plant, and then if you, if you feel the soil being um, wet, let me show you right here. It's a little tomato plant, a tiny Tim. So poke your finger down in the soil. This one I just watered yesterday. So you can see the soil color is nice and dark. And put your finger down in here. If you feel it dry down there, then you're gonna wanna water. Um, and another clue is to see if the top of your soil starts to turn a light brown. That's a clue that your plant needs, needs water. So just like any other vegetable, you wanna check it to make sure that um, you know, it's not getting uh, too dry, but you definitely don't want it to get waterlogged. <clears throat> Excuse me, I'm losing my voice. So um, I think I saw another question about peas fly by too. And hello, Amy, how are you? Great to have you here. And I think Kirian is here. Yes, Kirian, how are you? It's nice to have time to relax. Good, I'm glad that you're, you have a little break from school. That's great, wonderful. And uh, Teresa Bell has a question about how do I revive my blackberry tree? Okay, Teresa, I have blackberry bushes. I don't have a blackberry tree, so I don't know if you're referring to possibly blackberry bushes. Um, so with my blackberries, what you wanna do for blackberries in the, in the winter time, they go dormant. So I cut them way back, um, pretty much to like just a little stick. I cut back all the growth that, that, they, that blackberries grew on last year brandon thank you for the for the super chat again thanks will do okay let me know how it goes there with your peas um so i cut, cut them back in the winter time and this just helps them explode in the springtime so if you're into your second or third year of growing blackberries you're not seeing any growth prune them back um, in the winter time when they go dormant and then make sure that you're keeping them well fertilized especially once they start to uh, break out uh, new leaves in the springtime. Um, I use Good Dirt Plant Food and Vermisterra Worm Tea on all of my plants, indoors and outdoors, and I had a ton of blackberries last year. I was super, super thrilled about that. They were just so delicious and tasty. Okay, we're gonna get into now question number four. And this was actually from uh, Lights Shining Brightly over on Instagram. And Lights Shining Brightly asked, is it still possible to grow tomatoes in the San Francisco Bay Area? I have a baby tomato cutting that's growing roots and I'm not sure I can plant it outside because it's winter time. Should I plant it indoors for winter? Okay, that's another one of those cases where tomatoes are a warm weather vegetable. So as long as you know the difference between warm weather vegetables and cold weather vegetables, as I mentioned before, I have a section in my book about that, you, you can kind of gauge when you can grow plants outside, particular vegetables outside, or when they need to be grown inside. So tomatoes are a warm weather vegetable. They like temperatures um, in the night times around 50 to 65 degrees, and during the day, they do really well when it's between 70 and 85 or 90 degrees. So knowing that about tomatoes, you can gauge what the weather's like in your area, and if it's okay for you to have tomatoes growing at that particular time of the year. Now, that being said, of course, there's always exceptions to the rule. I did start some tomatoes in the late summer that are still growing outside, even though our nights have been down in the 40s, even a few nights in the 30s. They're very hardy varieties. They were brand new, healthy plants at the end of the growing season, and they're doing just fine. However, if I get a frost, those tomatoes will likely sustain damage if they're not killed. So what I like to do in the winter time here in California, and I would definitely suggest you doing this if you live in a Southern climate or a mild winter climate, is start some tomatoes inside. This one was started on, um, 
I think it was started about a month ago. I transplanted it last week into these little um, transplanter, smart pots transplanters. And if it's warm enough outside during the day, I will pop them out in the sun. If it's in the 60s during the day, they're gonna do fine. But I almost always bring them in at night uh, because it's in the 40s, that's a little bit too cold for them. Today I have them all inside because it's very windy outdoors. So, um, but get some going and that way when the weather does warm up, you are gonna have some tomatoes like this or even bigger to put into your garden beds um, when the weather gets warm. So these are a tiny Tim variety. It's a small dwarf variety of tomato. So it will grow beautifully in a container for a couple of months and then you can pop it out in the garden as the weather warms up. And these you can pick up too with the Cali Kim Smart Pots. It, you can pick up a Smart Pots by itself or you can buy it with three different kinds of seeds, the tiny Tim, the um, a little small variety of zinnias and then a variety of lettuce, which grow beautifully in pots. So let me know if you have any other questions about growing tomatoes indoors. I know Nicole did have a question about grow lights and um, her tomatoes were looking a little bit yellow that she had inside. She, ha she said she had them in a, in a sunny window, which is great. I'm really glad that you were, they were getting some sun. But she said they were turning yellow and just not looking um, super, super healthy. So what I would do is just pop them under a grow light. And I know a lot of people are really intimidated about grow lights, but they're so easy to set up. Um, this one here, um, I talked about on a video a, a few weeks back. This is one you can purchase from Gardeners Supply. It's all ready to roll for you, and it's a really pretty decorative light. But if you want to get something set up very, very simple and very inexpensive, this clamp light works great. And this is just one of those clamp lights you can get at any hardware store. It's in a gallon container of, uh, just an empty gallon container that I filled with sand. And then it has a PVC pipe. You guys can't see this too. It has a PVC pipe right here. And then the light is clipped to the PVC pipe. It has a special bulb in it that's uh, specially designed for growing light, growing plants. And I do have a grow light um, video, how you can get three easy grow lights set up. And of course, I also put that in my book because grow lights are so important to um, getting your plants off to a good start. So I do have uh, a whole section, quite a bit actually, in my book about grow lights. You got the grow light bin, you got the clamp light in here, which I just showed you. Um, there are several little shop lights. So lots of great photographs and step-by-step -step instructions on how to get four different grow light setups with all of the um, information about what you need to buy and all that. But you can get them set up pretty quick. They're, this one I think cost maybe $10, maybe 12 or 15, um, but it's very inexpensive and well worth um, the effort it takes to get your grow light set up. I mean, if you're gonna take the time to start your vegetables from seed indoors, you might as well make sure that they're successful and get a little grow light station going. You'll be really glad um, that you did. Once you have it all set up, you're gonna have it for years. It really is an investment. And there's a lot of great LED lights, um, shop lights with LED lights already um, built into them. And there's actually links on um, my grow light video to all of those different uh, supplies so that you, you know exactly what to buy. So hopefully Nicole that helped answer your question on uh, helping out your tomatoes inside. Um, and let's go into the chat here and see what other questions we have. Whoops. What other questions we have left. So I want to know from you guys too, you see a little Christmas tree behind me. Is anybody else behind or feeling behind on their Christmas decorating? I know I definitely am. Um, things have been so hectic and crazy around here. We don't even have our tree yet. So, uh, and, and you know, when your kids get older, it's hard to get them all together to go get the tree, but they all want to go get it, but it's just the scheduling of it. So um, we're going to actually all go tomorrow evening and pick out our tree. We're going to get a live tree and decorate it, but we have very few decorations up yet. So I'm feeling a little behind. I don't know if you guys are, are the same way, but join the club. Don't feel bad. Um, my house does not look like the perfect Christmas house right now. So if yours does, that's wonderful. I love seeing those pictures. It really helps get me into the Christmas mood. So um, Christy's popping the links in the chat there for our live um, book signing event coming up the 28th. So make sure you grab your tickets. 
Um, the deadline to grab those tickets is the 20th, and we really, really would love to see you there. If you live anywhere in California, please make the effort to come. It's gonna be so much fun. Okay, let's see what other questions we have in the chat. Oh, Rita, good. I'm glad that you understand where I'm coming from. I'm glad I'm not the only one here because um, I was starting to feel really bad about it yesterday. We went to a Christmas party and their house looked beautiful. And I was just like, oh, I have nothing up in my house yet. <laughs> okay, um, let's see here. My backyard, one, two, three. When I see your videos, it makes me want to move to warmer climates. <coughs> We do feel very blessed to be able to grow year-round here. Uh, it is, we do feel very blessed, and it's, it's absolutely wonderful. So my backyard, you're going to have to come down and pay us a visit sometime. Okay, let's see here. Kirian, any suggestions for starting melons indoors? I haven't had too much luck with them so far. Canada is really cold, and I'm getting really excited for gardening. Okay, I bet you are. I bet you're ready to get out there and feel that warm sun on your back. Um, okay, the, the one thing about starting melons indoors, and I don't know if, if you might possibly be making this mistake, is that they grow pretty fast. Thank you, Rita. <laughs> they grow pretty fast, and um, okay, good. Kim's behind on decorating too. Okay, good. I am really glad that a lot of you are sharing the same uh, issues I am this year. So thank you so much. I don't feel quite as bad anymore. <laughs> okay, um, and Camera Guy, yes, has been very supportive of not making me feel bad at all that the house isn't fully decked out for Christmas. So thank you, I appreciate that. He's a great, great uh, supportive husband and I'm so, so lucky. Okay, so uh, back to the question here. You don't wanna start them too early. In Canada, I don't know when your last frost date is, maybe in May or even possibly June. So you might wanna start them, I'd say no sooner than six weeks before, unless you have lots of space in your house and you can transplant them into larger pots. They don't like their roots to be um, disturbed. So you have to be really careful when you're transplanting. Usually I start mine, I don't have any here with me, but usually I start mine in little peat pellets and then I can very gently peel off the netting and then pop them outside in the garden beds. Um, but if you get them started too soon, they just kind of get overgrown in your house and then um, they grow out of the container that you have them in. So you might also wanna choose some smaller varieties of melons since you have a very short growing season in Canada. So try like maybe a sugar baby melon, which is a more compact variety of watermelon. Um, so maybe some cantaloupe, which are smaller. If anyone else has some good ideas for compact uh, melons that she could grow, that would be helpful. So um, yes, definitely Cliff's giving some great advice too. They want to send roots out quickly and can't be constrained. So yeah, don't start them too soon and just plant smaller, more compact varieties that will do well in your short growing season. Okay, that was a really good question. Okay, Lily, can you talk about fruit trees a little bit? Okay, Lily, I noticed you answered this question in the chat earlier, so thank you so much for being here today. I honestly, I have don't have a lot of experience growing fruit trees. I ha do have a couple going in containers, large containers outside. Um, an orange tree, a lemon tree, and a lime tree, but I in no way consider myself an expert on fruit trees. I just haven't done it a whole lot and haven't had a ton of success, honestly. So there's probably others of you out there who are really good fruit tree growers that could help her out and give her some advice. And maybe you could tell us specifically which fruit tree you're interested in so that maybe we could help you um, a little bit more. So Jacopo and Tony, hello from Italy. Great to have you here. Thank you so much. Nicole, thank you, that is so sweet. She super chatted $2.99. I really appreciate that, Nicole. Thank you so much for your support. And I really hope you have success with your indoor tomatoes. So let me know if you have any other questions, send me an email. Okay, um, Nisha, lemons are finicky. Just waiting for a lemon, absolutely. I, I absolutely feel the same. I think I got one lemon off my tree last year. And I know Jack, I don't know if Jack is here today, but he's been um, commenting on Instagram that he has a little lemon tree that has 20 little mini lemons. So that's super impressive. And I'm sure he could maybe give us some tips on what he did to get 20 lemons on his tree. So I would love to hear any other tips as well. A bunch of chickens, so that's really good fertilizer, Brandon. Yeah, that's absolutely great. Um, hello from Las Vegas. The weather is nice today. Planting my peas from Rebecca. That's great, Rebecca. Perfect time there in Las Vegas to plant peas, wonderful. 
Carol, howdy from the coast of Texas. When I go to remove the webbing from my peat pellets, the tomato roots are so fragile, they often break. Hi, Carol, welcome to the live stream today. Um, you know what? Tomatoes are surprisingly resilient. It's okay if you break a few of those tomato roots. I often do when I'm transplanting. They, tomato roots will definitely take a beating. The tomato plants will take a beating and still do just fine. So they're not so much like squash or like melon that are a little bit more fragile. Um, they will do great if some of the roots get ripped off. In fact, I just transplanted these from peat pellets into here about a week ago, and I actually left them a little bit long, too long out in the sun. Uh, for the first time, they were kind of droopy, and they I moved them inside. I broke roots off when I was planting them and they bounced right back and look how beautiful this plant looks just uh, four or five days later. So wonderful. Okay, Love and Tree question, is it too late to plant cover crops? Okay, for those of you, great question, Love and Tree. For those of you that don't know what cover crops are, they are crops or seeds that you can plant just to cover your soil over the cold winter months. You're not necessarily growing them to harvest them, but you're growing them to help enrich your soil. So as long as you can still work your soil, if you're, you're not completely under snow and your, your ground is not completely frozen, go ahead and throw some seeds down there. Um, typically you should do it a couple of, like maybe four weeks or so before your, your first frost date. Um, but if you don't get frost, go ahead and throw them down now. You can, you can do seeds like any legumes, like peas and beans. You can do um, clover, um, really anything that covers the soil. Sometimes I even just do lettuce, but peas, legumes, and clover are especially good for helping to re rebuild your soil and for building nitrogen into the soil. So if your ground's not totally frozen, absolutely go for it. Okay, we are going to answer one more question here. And then we'll sign off for the day and we will see, oh, and Brandon, another live stream, wonderful, $1.99. My mint is doing just great. That is great, Brandon. Mint is an awesome herb to grow, super easy. And it is absolutely wonderful to have in, um, we love to just pop it in our water to flavor our water. Um, Brandon, how do you like to use your mint? So I'm really glad your mint is doing well. And But make sure you're growing in a container because it does get uh, very, very invasive if you grow it in your garden beds. Laura, hi, so glad you caught that tail in the live stream here. That's wonderful, glad that you made it. Okay, Catherine Little Bear, thank you so much, Catherine, for your $1.99 super chat and for your really cute little sticker. That's so great. I saw they had those new little stickers on the super chat, so that's super exciting. Nicole, you are so welcome. Glad that you're here and glad we're able to help you. Rain Bees, 100 people are in the stream. Yes, that's fantastic that there's 100 people watching. And make sure you guys share with your friends, your gardening friends, because you can tell um, and invite them to join our live stream. As you can tell, we have so much fun here. It's so encouraging and there's so many people offering such wonderful, wonderful tips. So let's see here, one more comment. Waiting for February, Jacob, to sow my vegetables there in Italy. That's wonderful. Okay, guys, thank you so much for joining us. I want you guys to have an absolutely wonderful holiday season. Remember, our regular Monday live streams will be off for two weeks, two Mondays. We'll be back on Monday, uh, January 6th of 2020. But please make sure you put on your calendar December 28th, 2019, 2 p.m. Pacific time, we are having our live in-person book signing launch in Thousand Oaks, California. We'll be live streaming a portion of it. So make sure you put that on your calendar, invite your friends to join us, invite your family to join us if you're off uh, work that day. Well, it's a Saturday, so hopefully most of you are. We wanna see you there and celebrate launching and kicking off our new book with all of you who have supported us so much and helped us um, get there. All right, guys, happy holidays, Merry Christmas. We will see you guys later, bye-bye.